When the world has got you down and Alzheimer's sucks. It's an equal opportunity disease that chips away at everything we hold dear. And to date, there's no cure. So until there is, we continue to fight with the most powerful tool in our arsenal, love. This is Love Conquers Alls, a real and really positive podcast that takes a deep dive into everything Alzheimer's, the good, the bad, and everything in between. And now, here's your hosts, Susie Singer-Carter and Cassie Cruz. All you gotta do is sing a song. Hello, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. I'm Susie Singer-Carter. And I'm Cassie Cruz. And yes, we're recording on Mother's Day, but you won't be seeing this till later. Yeah, I figured, you know what? Happy Mother's Day to everybody. There's always a Mother's Day. So, you know, it, it, and you know what? every we day is every, Mother's Day. Exactly. <laughs> every day is Mother's Day because we love our mother. Thank you, right. mother. And, all and if you're a mom, you deserve it. <laughs> and even the mothers that didn't birth us. <laughs> right. I, I, have, I have several of those and I thank you and I love you very much. So happy recording on Mother's Day. Welcome to Love Conquers All. <laughs> yes, we are excited. We're so happy to be here. We're happy to be at anywhere. We're lonely. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Well, it is the COVID-19. We're not lonely, probably, but we are separated physically from really a lot are. of people. So this is such a, it's a fun way to connect, right, Cass? It really is. And we really appreciate everybody joining us. Of course, we're get, getting on that YouTube space. And so we really appreciate you subscribing and being part of our family, right? And Absolutely. Coming to us anonymously if you need to, because we're really here for all the caregivers and anybody that's dealing with Alzheimer's, because they're you're not alone. You're not alone. There's a lot out there and we just want to keep the conversation going and create awareness that uh you know there's so many um people working from different aspects to try to find the cure uh, find a treatment um and get educated um in this arena right, right. and hold and hold hands every there's and, so many people hands. ready to hold hands mm -hmm. so that's absolutely great. absolutely and we have talking about mm -hmm. holding hands please would you introduce yeah yeah i was going to tell you i met she this is a she is a force she is an right? artist beyond under I, i'm just like wow and she just <laughs> adapted and adapted and adapted so please do tell tell yeah, all our audience about her i'm happy to i we have i i met susan faris uh, she was, I met her, I want to say about, well, she's going to correct me. I think it was because time is all together. It's uh, time makes no sense anymore. I no, think there is no was, time. <laughs> I think, I think it was about four years ago. Could be less, more, I don't know. But my friends, dear friends were doing a musical down in San, San, uh, San Diego, La Jolla area. And she was part of the team in public, in publicity for the, the, uh, project and, I don't know, we just connected and we've stayed in contact. And when we started the podcast, well, she had mentioned this incredible thing that we're gonna talk about and um, has been so diligent. Thank you, Susan, for staying in touch with us and reminding me about her story because I, we you know how we get crazy oh. in our lives. And I've been, I had her on my short list at the top to have as a guest. So I'm so excited we got to, to get her on here. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little background on her. Because oh, good. I have to say little because she's so varied. No, no, of course, because she has an expansive background. So yeah. give give those short and then we'll make sure that we put the long, right? Um, yeah, in the show notes. On, for the, sure. on the show notes for this. Okay. Right. So as, as of today, uh, Susan is the owner of, uh, of SJF communications which is uh a, an umbrella for a lot of things that she does which she's a she does pr she does um uh publicity and and she handles writing and social media and public speaking photography mentoring coaching uh a lot of things for other people's projects for other people's uh dreams and um and realizations of of projects that they are working on now including books including books that switches a whole amazing area. Yeah, yeah, of course. I would love to and, right? And also yeah. she she's an artist herself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The writer herself. You she's had to be. Actress. You can't I mean, you can't you she's gotta be all creative. Of those yeah. Yeah, she's extremely creative. And also um she's an RN, right? She's yes. a nurse. Yeah. No, so there's nothing she doesn't do. So it's like we she yeah, she can wire she can wire electricity. Yeah. <laughs> she does it all. Stop. You need a quilt, she'll make it. 
Yeah. And she's like, she's amazing. She's a brand, she's a brand creator. She's just, yeah. you know, she's a fantastic human being. <laughs> and she's fun to be around. But the, uh, the other thing is she, you know, and we can talk about a ton of stuff she does, but what, what really touched my heart was her story about with her, with someone very special in her life. And in terms of being a caregiver and in terms of dementia and Alzheimer's, which is, it's very unique. Um, and I, I just want to, to applaud her for, for pushing it in front of me and, and allowing, allowing us to share it, having her share with me and then allowing us to share it with you. So um, without further ado, oh. I'm I like how you got very like Italian, like a share it with me <laughs> and you. I know. Uh, you want to know, here's what my mother taught me, because my stepfather was an Italian Jew, okay, from Sicily. Una mano lava l'altra. Doing Una manta. manta, what? Three manas, lava la fat. What did I say? Uh, I don't know, but please tell One me. hand washes the other, two washes the face. <laughs> go, go, no. Those, those are beautiful. <laughs> I love your mom. And we are going to say happy uh, Mother's Day to your mother. As well, yes, right? happy Mother's Day to my mommy, my beautiful mommy. <gasps> Hi, Susan. Susan, Hi, welcome. Welcome Thank to you. Conquers Alls. Thank you so much for coming. And my pleasure us and sharing your beautiful story that you're going to share and we're going to you know i i asked susan if, if she would do this and i and i and she said yes and so i'm glad because we're going to do a different little bit of a different format and and have her read this beautiful poem that she wrote and um and then we'll get into why she read it and besides you know a beautiful a beautiful uh, piece of art for everyone to share so Susan. Well, happy Mother's Day to everyone. I know uh, <clears throat> we become mothers different ways and I'm an adoptive mom. So I'm really proud of our daughter and I'm a daughter and I'm a sister and all that. And I just wanna send my wishes to everyone for Mother's Day. Whether you're a furry pet mom, yeah. mom to be, people that have lost their moms, people that are- Losing their moms. Poignant <laughs> with their moms at this point, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, Absolutely. We put, we, we, there's nothing greater than mothers, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, we revere. and we wouldn't, and we wouldn't be here without them. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's yes. true. Okay. That's true. <laughs> you know, and we do like that. They, they help nourish us and all those other things that happen in our, in our growth. Right. And, and all right. the wonderful people that come into our lives that are very motherly to us. Absolutely. Family is what you make, you know? We yep. choose our family. We, we're born into a family, but then we get to choose them. So anyway, so Susan, will you, will you read this poem that you- I certainly will. I would be so honored. Thank you. Okay. The poem is called Anne's Zest Ends. Prelude. Her zest for life, boundless energy, a smile a minute so full of glee, remembrances of my grandmother Anne, so significant to me. She ran the show, she was in the know about this or that, nonetheless always on the go. So sharp, so much fun, and so on the ball. She, how I long to remember and long to recall, endless walks, sun or snow when I was small, she'd pick me up when my spirit would fall. My first real buddy, my first true friend, her ears and shoulders she'd always lend. If I was sad, my pain I'd spend, but always through her, my heart would mend. Intermission. But when I was in about seven in 1963, something in her changed so drastically. She would no longer laugh. She no longer knew me. She would wander about so aimlessly. She would light the gas stove and let the fire run free. Her eyes then would gaze in a wild combat stare. She grew mute and confused. She would pick at her hair. Mm. Who was this new stranger taking over her mind? Where, where did her spirit go? And what did it find? From doctor to doctor, this mystery grew. It was 1965 and still nobody knew. To a state institution eventually, her spirit then faded each day religiously. She grew steadily worse. It took six more long years. I would visit her with my mother. We would shed many tears. Day passes were draining. The public would stare. We'd assist her in the bathroom, comb the knots from her hair. I wonder how she felt personality withered. Did she realize her melt? Were her synapses in a blizzard? Finale. On the 13th of April, 1971, when the hospital called us, twas the weight of a ton. 
She was terminally losing the battle and had wasted away, lost all faculties, not her choosing. She died soon the next day. I reached for her hand at the bedside to say goodbye, friend, on that fateful day. And she mumbled and stared and connected. She mumbled as if to say, so long for now, Susan. I'm afraid it's time to take my rest because Alzheimer's drained my life away, but at least you've inherited my zest. Reflections. 20 years later, and this was in 1991, 20 years later, I weep for the past, fond memories of Anne. She left the good life so fast. Her suffering, although it was an unfair curse, was the stimulus for me to become a nurse. As I seriously reflect on this draining disease that robs the brain of freedom cells and independence ease, I am angry no definite cause or cure has been found. All the research won't touch the pain that abounds. If I had just one wish that would be granted to me, I'd want to spend a day with Anne, just her and me. Her cheerful style, giving nature so gold, her best feature zest, her stature so bold. But who's kidding who? She was taken away in her prime. A true servant of God, strong will, lost mind. Signed, one who can still remember. Thank you so much. That's so beautiful. Thank really you. Beautiful. Now, I think we anybody that's been through this journey is right there with you in every word. And um, it really, it really exemplifies it really it really frames exactly you know everyone's journey is different but it really frames it for all of us it's 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 sit and it's insidious it's horrible it's horrible and it i can what touched me about besides how beautifully how right. you expressed the feelings of the from three generate you know three different decades four different decades you know the pain doesn't go away and and the frustration of of the lack of progress we've made in this yeah. area is just so frustrating it is it's so frustrating and that you you feel like you know i i keep i keep hoping that while i'm on this journey with my mother that, that i'm going to be helpful in some way of pushing the needle forward mm -hmm. you know and 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 that's all what you can hope for is that you know that that we aren't we have to, anyone who's gone through it hasn't gone through it in vain right well, here's the thing that i want to say is Anne's for sure with us today is you got to bring her story and her love into our podcast and we oh. are continuing sharing her love and her story via and you. her zest and her zest and and also her her loss of her mind not of a loss of her, I mean, eventually the loss of her body, but the mind went first and what that looked like. It, it, every word, um, extremely touching, extremely poignant. And, and, and that frustration that Susie talks about, the lack of um, uh, progress or so, mm -hmm. it seems that lack of progress. But once, like we talked about with kaleidoscope, right? Once we, once, once there's that one little, that one little chink because of all of our efforts, we're not going to, all of our efforts and everything and anything that she went through is not going to be in vain. Right. Because in the end, there's going to be a cure. We're not going to stop because the train's just getting bigger and bigger for the people that are speaking, that are, that are speaking out, that are becoming right. advocates, that are saying, no, this is a bigger thing than what anybody's thinking it is. It's not senality. It's not just people getting elderly. And they've probably been doing this for years and years and years. Obviously, uh, you know, it's gotten worse, perhaps, or maybe we've just been diagnosing it. And so we only see that. Totally. It's, well, that's a great, you know, that's, 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 a, that's a great. That's like the COVID-19 thing, too, that we're in right now. It's like right. the numbers that are, be, it's because they're being tested now. Right. Right. Now we're looking for something. And so was it around before? And what is it? And how, you, you know, and all these things come out when we, when we, um, uh, uh, collaborate focus. our efforts and focus, and focus. on efforts. And that's, that's what's Forza. interesting about Susan's story is that it starts in 1963, right? 1963. When I, right, right. When I was, was about seven or eight years old when it started. And yeah. then I wrote the poem 20 years after she died. She died oh, in 71 wow. at age 60, almost 61. 
of early onset Alzheimer's right. and it's familial in the family with her. She had nine brothers and sisters or eight brothers and sisters and several of them have had Alzheimer's, but not the early onset. Right. She was the early onset in the family, which is, a so, you know, and my mom had, my mom was in her early thirties. She's 85 now, my mom. So this is my grandmother that this right. happened to. And of course, we've always been worried about it and worried about it. And we used to do a, a little test, uh, beach ball, frog and horse. What are those three things I asked you to remember for years and years? We just kid around with it. Beach and, ball, frog and horse. The frustrating thing was. Did you remember? Did you oh, remember? Yeah, yeah oh, we good. still remember. Your mom never, your mom never got it. Not awesome. good. Awesome. So, but, but she was in her early 30s going through this. Uh, my grandfather had died at age 55. And so the first few years of this were, I guess, manageable, but it got really almost scary. And she took her from doctor to doctor, as the poem says. I think she said, I called her yesterday and she said six doctors. No one knew what it was. The final one said, here, it's called Alzheimer's. You need to read this and she needs to go to the hospital today, blah, 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 blah. There were no daycare centers or wow. any respite for the caregivers. And so unfortunately, she had to be institutionalized for her safety and our safety because of what happened and, and folded with her right. situation. And, and having in, in the, the lack of understanding of it during that time and not, you know, notwithstanding, there's still so much misunderstanding. That's why we're doing the podcast right. because people have, you know, there's stereotypes and there's stigmas and all kinds of misunderstandings of how and why this plays out. And it's, you know, it's anything but senility. And, and it happens like to, to your grandma at 60, which is like, you know, some, that's, that's just another chapter for most of us. That's going right. to be, you know, that's like a whole, that's, that's far too young. And, um, and it's, it, it must have been so frightening to be going through that, your mother having to deal with oh, that. Yes. I knew what it's like. You as a granddaughter, my daughter was so close with my mom. Mm -hmm. that, it, it, that's her, her soulmate is my mom. Same. That's, that's yeah. what it was. It was soulmate. I yeah. mean, she was just really, really special in my life and still is. I think yes. that her all the time. That's the same thing with, with my daughter, my, my first mm -hmm. daughter and my mom and they, and my second daughter says, you know, she feels like she was, you know, gypped in some way because she oh. didn't get the real nanny. They, she didn't get, she didn't get to know that woman. Right. Right. So Cause they're nine years apart. And I, and I, I. I mourn for her because, yeah, like your, sounds like your grandma. And isn't it weird that it takes people away that have this zest and this. Absolutely. This, it's this always that. It, it's it, right. it My mom is still yeah. like in a wheelchair and people go, oh, is Norma your mom? Oh, we love her. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, she has this, this joie de vie, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, here's the thing that I want to say to both of you, and I know you know this, because I've had a lot of people pass in my life, and certainly early on in my life, uh, my parents, uh, you know, were, were two of them that, that passed early on. They never leave you. They really don't. Okay. And, and the story lives on. Um, um, their story lives on, you know, within me. And, and I get to, uh, you know, propagate they, that. Right. I get to be that signature for, for me, of course, but because of that background, even if it was dicey, <laughs> even if it was messy or whatever, right? Yeah. And what I want to say is, yes, your daughter, your other daughter, your second daughter didn't get to experience her the way she was, but she does through you. That's why like, I'm missing that because you get to tell her all those stories about who she was, and then she gets to see all those things and all those videos you took, Susie, right? Yeah, that's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And that's mm -hmm. what we get to share. And th because guess what? We are all going to uh, transition out of this place and not be in this body at some point. I, I, and, and uh, you know, I don't look forward to that, although I, 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 will, I will accept when that happens that I love living. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so did Anne, right? She, that's why she had this for life. And she brought you on that journey. And that's the journey that uh, she helped you pave a path for yourself. Right, Susan? Absolutely. I, Absolutely. I, yeah, it's beautiful and it shows and it resonates in, in you know, who you are. And um, I say that that the silver lining of, of Alzheimer's it, or dementia or any, does any, any hardship that we go through is, the, is, is what we learn and pass on. And it changes us forever if we allow it to. 
it, but it can be changed just in a, in a really positive way. And I feel like my mom's journey has changed all of us that has touched her in a really positive way and including now my film that touches people everywhere. And, and it's her story. It's not mine, it's hers. Right. And, I, and I'm so proud of her. I mean, you know, I, 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 st I read, uh, it's, the film is up on Amaletto now as well, which is like- Congrats, congrats. Oh, thank you. And so I, 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 didn't, I haven't read reviews or just people's comments and it was like, you read this comment, I love Nanny. I love this woman. Who is this woman? I love Nanny. I want a Nanny like that. And you, I just think, God damn it, I wish my mom could see that, right? Right. Well, you right. know, that's what, the frustrating stuff, part. Yeah. But you get to share that with her and also all those people that you don't even know that you're touching, Susan, oh, yeah. with your story. Same thing with you, right, Susan? All yeah. the people that, that we get to touch that, you know, because I'm a storyteller as well. So we don't know in the future the legacy that we leave and also that one person that we might make that shift for. That oh. one person that needs that thread of hope mm -hmm. that's saying, hey, you know what? It's okay. You've fallen. It's okay, you might be in a depression right now, but you, you can come out of it. You, you can make something, you can, you can do it. You have to decide you want to, and then just one step at a time. And it doesn't have to be the, the mountain looks, you know, just, yeah. just put one step. And that's what I have to remind myself, like, you know, just get up today, take a shower. <laughs> and sometimes that's all you can do. <laughs> Yeah. And the shower usually refreshes you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Certainly as a caregiver, that's sometimes, right. you know, the best thing that you can make happen for yourself that day and drink a lot of water and eat some good food and make sure you get enough rest and just keep it really simple. Yeah. You know, that's really what we're talking about. If you're caregiving for somebody, we know that it's daunting. Right. We know that it's overwhelming because you have a whole other person's life that, that can't even, that doesn't even thank you, that doesn't even know who you are sometimes, right? And it's very, yeah, say something. I, I, do you have one more poem dedicated to caregivers that I didn't send to you? Would I be oh, able to read that? Yes, oh, please. would you? Please, would no, you this please is a special that? day. We get to be is, we get to oh, artist. Yeah, yes. <laughs> please, please grace us with your poetry, Thanks. please. Yes. So your this was word. also written between ninety one and ninety three, a century ago. <laughs> so some things may have changed, but it's called caregiver. I, your loving caregiver need my own care as well, so I can be your guiding strength, hearing stories you may tell, and follow when you wander, and take the lead at times, answering your many questions, listening to your words and rhymes. I, your loving caregiver, need time alone for me, to relieve my stress from worry, so your support I can be. Whether I should write a poem, or take a bubble bath, or go and see a movie, or walk along some path, or call a friend and chat a while, or a big hug receive, or scream and yell from frustration. This time I really need. Please don't under misunderstand me. I wear my ribbon with pride. You know you're very special to me and my love for you I'll not hide. Just one more thought I ponder, a wish I will convey. Through all the trials and, trials and tribulations, don't fear. I remain your caregiver today. Nothing's changed. <laughs> oh, nothing has changed it's so, absolutely that that okay. is that that is it you encapsulized it that's it and we couldn't be caregivers that's why i dedicated it um well there is a story about how i started writing the poetry i was going to ask you that i Are wanted you, to, yeah i wanted to trans that's exactly what i want to transition to tell transition. me how what motivated you all those okay. years later to to dig deep to and, and and open up that that wound again you know okay but so, before you do that, and I want you to do that, I just want to say, mm -hmm. I love that poem. Yeah. Thank you. I want to take the moment right after you read such a beautiful homage to the caregivers that that's it in an essence, you just the nutshell. So thank you. So yes, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I want to put it up on our site. It's just, it's exact. It really, it really, it really speaks to what we, or what our mission is. Yeah. Really Very does. important people. Very important people. <clears throat> so in 1991, I had gone to see the movie Awakenings with Robert wow. De Niro, Robin Williams and all. And so there was a character in the movie, her, her name was Alice Drummond, I believe, who caught this ball. She was sitting in a wheelchair and she had a gaze about her that reminded me of my grandmother, Anne, who had died 20 years prior, which is what the poem, the big poem is about. Mm -hmm. So I went home. 
And I'll put, first of all, I was crying in the movie theater because it just profoundly affected me, this lady, this character. My husband was with me. We went home and I was thinking about her, my grandmother, for a couple of days. And then my husband went on a business trip. And this one night I just couldn't get to sleep. This is 1991 or so. And I took a bath. I had a glass of wine. I just, you know, I just could not fall asleep. So I grabbed this journal that he had gotten for me the prior Christmas, and I just sat on the couch. And that poem, And Zest Ends, poured out of me. I still have the handwritten version where there's, you know, num things crossed out. But I was sitting on the couch there, crying and laughing and remembering, and all this stuff came out. It just was so cathartic. It was profound. The next day, I called my mom. She's in New Jersey. I was in Florida at the time. And I read the poem to her. And she started bawling. She was crying like crazy. And she said, you know, that is the closest thing to what we went through way back when, because that was years prior, 20 years prior. I want you to share this poem with everybody. So in 1991, I was a new entrepreneur. I was doing continuing education for nurses. And I got up everywhere I could, Chamber of Commerce's meetings, nursing meetings or whatever. And I'd say, can I read this poem for you guys? And the response was completely overwhelming to me where people would come up and talk to me after. I don't know why I had the chutzpah to, I don't know why I was wanting to proclaim this to the world, but I did. And it was because and of Anne. Tissues would be <laughs> coming out. They'd want tissues. They'd want to talk their aunt or, or their mother. It was a profound, cathartic, therapeutic event that happened from this one poem. So I continued to write. I was a nurse. Uh, I was also a military nurse and had just gotten out of the military after 12 and a half years in as a Navy and then Army nurse. Oh and so I was an gosh. entrepreneur. <laughs> and so I just kept writing. Uh, and I wrote about my dad when he had his heart attack and going through a bypass. I had my pad with me with my mom. And I was trying to tell her how we're going to see him after the surgery. And this other poem ran out of me, pages long. So it was so therapeutic that I kept writing. And HIV was fairly new at the time. I wrote about that. I was an infection control nurse. I was an assistant director of nursing. I did nursing continuing education. So from all these nursing wow. avenues, I just kept writing. And so it developed into a book in 1993, Poetic Expressions in Nursing. So that's the story of how the poem poured out of me and how it touched people. Ultimately, after writing and getting the book published, I developed a continuing education program for nurses, and I would teach my nursing seminar about the art of nursing poetry. And there were several seminars where they had nurse artists, nurse poets, a nurse comedian, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. We as nurses are very artistic, very. but we don't get to show that side of us many times you know my god so Susan they need it now with the COVID these nurses are like nothing exactly. short of heroes exactly I yep. mean they need it now what they're going through is it couldn't be more I mean if they don't get let it out it's going to just fester Ugh, I think there's going to be some PTSD needs to, oh I do we did a little special on COVID I and I was putting visuals to it and I I mean that whole run that I put Cassie of the of the nurses with like uh there's like marks and scars and from the mask and everything the that mask. they're putting because they're on all day long they have to they have to protect themselves from this you know invisible uh right. enemy and they can't see it and they don't know where it is and then you know being in that and working and being the dedication breathe, is just I mean it's amazing I, if any of us who've had surgery you know I remember I, I had uh, back surgery when my daughter was six months old I had a uh, ruptured oh, disc wow. and it, it, there's nothing quite as painful I've had two babies and a ruptured disc I, I literally was like please cut my leg off oh, wow. I mean because the pain goes down your sciatic and it's relentless sure. Sure. and um, I remember waking up from the surgery and I, I couldn't have been more grateful for the doctors and the nurses. Like I felt I, if I, if I could have put, wrapped the world up for them and put it in a thing. Yeah. And I was young. I was, a, I was a kid. And I, I said, you saved my life. I don't know how to thank you. Like I can't, it's, it's like, it's too big what you've done for me. Like you, you changed my life. But that's what nurses and doctors do. Yeah. You know, that's their, I mean, that's why you, you know, Anne actually spurred you on to become the artist and also the, the health professional that you are, Susan. So her chutzpah, 
her jest, her jest for life, <laughs> it became yours, you know, and like that, her, her zest, I, jest, <laughs> her, her, her zest, <laughs> her jest and zest. <laughs> um, but that is, it's true because, you know, I've, my doctors are amazing and my nurses that have helped me, they're amazing and they are helping us with our health, the most important thing. Right. And that's kind of what we're talking about to the caregivers, making sure that you stay healthy so mm -hmm. you can help the person that has Alzheimer's. And obviously that's failing. So there's some degeneration that's happening and we have to find out why mm -hmm. so we can maybe uh, cut it off at the knees before we get to that place or get a treatment, obviously in tandem, get a treatment. So in fact, we're going that way that it can be slowed down, that it can be changed and we can change that course. Right. Yes, right. So very, very important. What um, motivated you um, to share the poem with the whole world? My mom. When my mom yeah. and I were on the phone, she just said, "You, this is what, because my mom repressed she was so in pain from doing that to have to put her mom in an institution in New Jersey for years. And, and after a while, my grandmother had TB and they wouldn't allow my mom to come and visit her because she had two kids, my brother and I, that were young. And, and so it was devastating for her and she kept it in for so long. So I guess it was kind of a gift to my mom when I wrote it and shared it with her because it allowed her to let it all out. She sure. kept it in. No one talked about it much. It was. It was just, that was my next question. Is what? It, it, there's a huge. Di you know. Yes, it, we still have so much, so much to learn and so much to educate right. others. But there was profoundly different when your mom and you were dealing with it with your grandma with Anne than it is today. What are the the? I mean, even for me, when my mom was first diagnosed, I was I, I shielded her. From our from her friends because I knew that she would be in I thought right. she would be embarrassed. So I thought I was I thought I was helping her maintain her dignity. Right. Uh, well, I think it was really me at the end of the day because everyone else embraced her. Well, you didn't know though, and you were trying to do what you thought that she would she would want. You know. Right. So yeah, it might have been you, but that was your take on like, hey, you don't want to subject her. Right. But also my friend, you know, I had, I remember having sp 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 specifically one of, one of my colleagues who was an executive at a, at a studio was, I was, I was going through a divorce at the same time. So it was like a, the trifecta of hell. And, um, she was coming to pick up my, uh, treadmill for, I was selling everything. And my mom was living with me at the time. And I was like, I had my care, our, my daughter's caregiver, who becomes my mom's caregiver, who's in the movie, Erlanda. Erlanda, can you take mommy in the in in the yard? Because you know, you never know what's going to come out of her mouth at that time. It was like there was no, there is no filter, was no filter, you know, and and like at the time, I I didn't know anybody with Alzheimer's. I didn't, and I just thought it's I I, I didn't know how to deal with it, and it it makes me cringe when I think that I was trying to hide her. Right. You know, like, like she was an embarrassment. It's like the love of my life. And I'm trying to hide her. It, right. it's, it's horrible. With, with my grandmother, my mom was telling me that yesterday, in fact, I can send you a follow up on this, but we had a really good discussion for her to remember some things yesterday about it. She was gradually getting more unsafe, kind of bizarre, um, physical with them, like holding yeah. them, wandering, found by a bridge. Um, hallucinating. Mm -hmm. My mom was telling me that she had, she, she, my, my grandmother had a discussion with a neighbor that the neighbor was going on a cruise. And in her mind, the next day or so, because they were doing an, um, a, a renovation of our house at the time, building an extra area, my grandmother had it in her mind that they were, they were going to bury her because they're doing the work outside and that my parents are going to go on a cruise and leave her and bizarre hallucination. Wow. She just told me this yesterday. I never knew about this. Um, she would wander near a bridge. They'd have to pick her up. So finally got to a point where my mom, they had to call the police because she was so physically strong and hallucinating that she was possibly going to be a threat to us. And so my visions were, I was eight to 14 growing up with this. Um, I would visit her in the institution with my mom as a young teen or a tween, 
I mean, that was pretty devastating. We would take her for a day pass and get her ice cream and go to this one restaurant in New Jersey. And she would look disheveled because the care was not right. up to par and there was nothing we could do about it. At that time, we, there weren't patient advocates at the time or risk managers right. or anything like that. So it was, the, so that was my story of watching this, this soulmate of mine just deteriorate before my time, before her time, I mean, and during my time. And it was, it was helpless. So it, when, when daycare centers started, it brought us kind of joy because at right. least it was some kind of a respite for the caregiver that, mm -hmm. you know, and then you didn't have to be in a state institution, but that mm -hmm. was it back then. It was. Right. And not many, and other people didn't understand, like there was, it wasn't, it wasn't talked about, there is no organization. So you didn't, there was right. no, no organization. So you couldn't really say, I mean, Honestly, people would just probably think your mom or your grandma rather lost her mind and that was it, you know, for because of some deficit in her. It wasn't right. due to a disease, but it was some deficit to right. her. Right. So, but you know what's great sad. is very sad. You, very sad, but the one thing that is great in our lifetime and in your lifetime, Susan, you've seen progress. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It may not be as fast as what we'd like. It may not be um, as immediate as we prefer, but there is some progress and there's a lot more people talking about it. There's Alzheimer's Association, there's Alzheimer's LA, there's Alzheimer's groups and organizations, there's caregivers, there's Lisa's Care Connection, exactly. there, are, there are Maria Shiver's uh, Task Force uh, for Alzheimer's in the state of California for us. I mean, there's just so many people now talking about it right there's so many people so important so important so important a lot so, of energy push yeah funnel yes energy. and and you know so we're seeing some progress so in the next 10 to 20 years within our lifetime right we'll see more progress i would hope because so. we're not going to give up and right. we're just going to get louder and we're going to get stronger <laughs> and there's going to be more and there's going to be more of us yeah. because there are more of us getting it and more of us being affected by it or maybe it's just coming to light what this disease really is mm -hmm. and it's not and it's not being misdiagnosed anymore mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so we can have a better um uh, handle to have some funds for it to you know be researched out so they they can find the cure so i i'm we're gonna fight we're gonna but you know we're gonna we're gonna fight with love mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're gonna we're fighting with love because the you know we can't fight with anger or or frustration or any of those lower vibrations. Those lower vibrations will not bring us to the place that we really want to go. Right. Right. So you know that's why we want to make sure that uh, we're loving everybody that uh, comes on and listens to us, and that we're spreading that and we're sharing mm -hmm. all different types of vocations and people and stories with you because we're also very different. And we just want you to know that, uh, you know, we are so grateful that you, you've come um, on our show and to, to, and to share your artistry with us and your story. Uh, your poems are, are, are touching and they touch us deeply. They're timeless and they, they you know, they just, they will resonate. And um, if, you know, if any, we're going to provide all your content. You're going to get inundated. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, if you want to, like, eh. <laughs> well, I wanted to say I'm also writing or have been writing about COVID-19 in poetry as well. Yeah, so which is it's, it's one powerful. and the same. It's it's one and the same yeah. because it's this mystery yeah. uh, that we don't right. know, and it's it's it, it has we can't define it yet at all. So it's 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 again it's it's in the same category, mm -hmm. and God, you couple that with Alzheimer's, which. You know, if you're still caregiving like myself, we talk. We've been talking about it a lot lately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, that's a double whammy, right there. It's a, it's a double whammy, and we also want to say for the people that are dealing with Alzheimer's in any capacity, we don't want COVID nineteen to confiscate um, the progress right. that we've had with um, the Alzheimer's situation, and we want that to continue. We want that to be folded in. It's very important that this stays on our forefront. And uh, you, we know that you've gotten a double whammy and oh, we yeah. want to make sure that we're championing you. I there. know. And Susan, as you write about that, I'm sure you will. It's like the, the caregivers yeah. that are dealing with other caregiving issues right. on top of that, right. it is, it's, it's, 
it's so oppressive and so daunting. Like they, it is, whoever is going through that right now on their own is just, uh, it's, we have to salute them because it is okay. unbelievable what they have to do. And we learned how to salute. Of emotions too. It's a roller coaster of emotions and it's stressful and it's frustrating even without Alzheimer's to be yeah. a caregiver for different types of diagnosis. Anything. For anything. anything, anything. And we salute all caregivers. Absolutely. And I know that we're focused on Alzheimer's here, but really it's for all caregivers. And, and we want all caregivers to, to use this as a resource as well, because yeah. we, we know yeah. that it's caregiver important. Caregiver is a caregiver, you know, and we, and we all are the same and we have the same problems and issues and, and frustrations and rewards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what we want to focus on. And we could keep talking forever, but we can't because we, yeah. we <laughs> Susan, um, we have to have you back when you finished your other, your other works. Okay. And we'd like to have you share them with everybody and um, keep us posted and, and let's get your um, audio book going. Sounds good. Oh, for sure. Let's do that. I have a question for you though. Is there anything that we did not touch on that you yeah. want to make sure that you share oh, today see. with us? I just want people to just, with what's going on with COVID-19, take care of yourselves. I mean, I don't know about mood swings that you guys have been having, but I'm definitely having them. Sometimes I will cry out of nowhere. Um, exercise helps, right? The diet, the right diet helps. Little breaks here and there. Just taking a walk in nature helps. Um, taking, taking your phone and take some pictures of flowers, anything, each day, little bursts of positive things in your life will get you through, hopefully. And we'll just see where we are next year. Let's do a recap and see oh, how we for are. Sure. I'm so happy I got to even know you more today. And it's, it's lovely to, to discover more about you. And, yeah. and I thank you for sharing that with us. And yeah. it's just, it's, it's really fantastic. So you. yeah, you're a great soul and a great spirit and you have so much more to give. So we're, we're waiting for it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you guys are fantastic. And we, I, it, was so, it was so much fun actually. So. Good, good. We so, like that. Well, that's important to us because we want to, we want, we know this journey can be difficult, but we also want to, um, you know, bring joy and love and, and let people laugh and we can laugh at our, if we can laugh at ourselves, Whew, that's a that's a nice release right and we want to thank you for joining us today of course we always want to thank all of you for joining us as well and spread the love and, yeah. and definitely remember that love is contagious love is powerful and love conquers all Absolutely. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you bye Susan bye. have a wonderful a day love you all bye. you have gotta a great day. do bye. is sing a song <laughs>